Hello YouTube, uh, this is Brian, uh, KM6ZX. Just a quick tour of my uh, station uh, while I'm running FT8. Um, I normally have an Elecraft K3S up here, uh, but that unit was not working the way it should and I sent it back to Elecraft. And they also indicated that it was an early unit and there was a lot of updates that they needed to make to my K3S to bring it up to the current uh, standard. So, that radio is gone, and uh, in its place, I have my trusty uh, K2 that I've been using for about five years as my main uh, radio. Uh, below it, I have the uh, the uh, auto tuner for 100 watts, and I also happen to have the uh, 50 hertz uh, six meter transverter module, and uh, that's what these two connectors are for, so I could hook. Uh, six meter and a two meter transverter to my uh, K2 and uh, operate on those bands. I don't currently have that set up. Uh, two keys that I use, uh, one is just the standard bencher paddles and the other one is my straight key. And the K2 has a unique uh, uh, system where you can daisy chain two paddles and uh, use some diodes. Basically, you ha can hook a straight key to an iambic paddle, and, and then this daisy chain goes to the radio, and you can use both keys. On the K3, you can just plug them into their separate uh, respective ports. Uh, over here, uh, my power supply, and uh, I'm using a Signalink a USB uh, sound card. And uh, up here, I have a monitor speaker. Since the signal link is connected to the, uh, the line audio out, which disables the internal speaker, um, I have an RS-232 uh, connector to control the rig. And I have a USB connector for the sound card. And those just go into a uh, USB hub and then into my laptop over here. And uh, the way the uh, FT8 works is uh, it just monitors the band. And uh, I'm using Vox to uh, control the push to talk. So it's a pretty basic setup. The uh, signal link uh, takes the Vox signal and that converts it into a push to talk uh, going to the uh, microphone jack. And I'm using a uh, rig uh, split operation, and that works just fine. The K2 is actually a pretty good radio uh, for using with this. And uh, for the actual radio configuration right now, when I'm running FT8, uh, you'll notice my mode here is showing RIDI with the dash over it, which is reverse. And that's because FT8 is on the upper side band and I'm running the uh, widest filter and uh, the DSP is currently turned off and that gives me a good uh, wide filter to catch all the digital transmissions. Another neat feature of my logging program is it monitors the uh, WSJTX and anytime somebody calls CQ it plots their location in real time on a map. So I'm getting a real time propagation display for the uh, band that I'm currently monitoring. So this is 17 meters. Looks like it's uh, working for uh, transcontinental uh, communications. So we'll scroll down to 20 meters. And then uh, let's see what 20 meters gives us. And I'll monitor CQ only. Again, the radio auto tunes with the uh, cat and the ATU remembers the uh, automatic antenna tuner setting. So hopefully it'll pick up some uh, CQs here in a sec. There we go. And uh, you can see some of the pins dropping uh, right here. Let's see what that is. 
That's 20 meters, Whiskey 7, Charlie Hotel Whiskey. All right, oh, I just got a, a DX here. Let's see where that's from. Oh, that's, let's see who that is. Yankee 9, or Yankee Bravo 9, so let's try him. I'm not too optimistic that I'll get a response, but it's worth a shot. Here we go. Uh, so now in yellow, I'm transmitting my his call sign, my call sign, and my grid square. And I'm sending at 25 watts again. If I had a full height antenna, uh, 10 meters above the ground, that would definitely uh, be a good thing, but I'm in an HOA. Okay, it looks like he just responded, or he responded to somebody else, so it uh, took me out of transmit mode. And I'll have to wait till he calls CQ again. The station just uh, finished his uh, QSO and he called CQ again, so I'm gonna respond again and uh, see if he picks me up. And he did, he just responded to me. I think he's in Malaysia. So he sent me a signal report, very nice. And this is on 20 meters using an attic antenna, a very compromised antenna at that, not because it's just low and it's uh, covered in structure and there's houses all around. I live in a small postage stamp sized uh, lot. All right, he got my signal report. He sent me 73. And now my logging program, it captured all the data. So I can click OK here and it goes straight to my logbook. And uh, if I go to my logbook, there it is. There's the QSO. Uh, it's logged. FT8, the signal reports, uh, my power, time, date, uh, grid location. So that's a good log entry. And uh, that's how FT8 works. I think it's a great mode to uh, monitor real-time propagation. Uh, what I like about this is I'm actually seeing the propagation from my antenna that I can receive and not propagation from some other station that's uh, putting it on the web. So I like that about it. Um, the other thing I like about FT8 is the uh, low power requirement. So even a modest uh, station like this, on a 25 watts on an attic antenna can make uh, DX uh, contacts. Uh, what I don't like about FT8 and is I, I really prefer interactive queue sewing. Uh, you can do that with RIDI or PSK31 and I have tried those modes and I really enjoy using them. Uh, I kind of regret, I wish more people would uh, go from FT8 and uh, try some of the other digital modes like PSK31. It just seems like right now that everybody's on FT8 and uh, it feels like the digital world is kind of suffering as a result. Anyway, that's just my soapbox opinion. And uh, yeah, Allocraft K2 uh, connected to a uh, laptop with a Signalink USB sound card. Uh, it's a pleasure to use. It's a great uh, setup and it's uh, you can make contacts.